Let's make a basic building system where we have a quick little building preview and we can click a button and it builds an object and we can switch between a couple of different types of objects as well. We're going to go for a fairly basic implementation. It will uh, support things like uh, rotation. As you can see here, it's a little awkward with the way that I have the aiming set up. I will fix that in the actual tutorial itself. This is a very expandable uh, system that could very much be a lot more complex than what we're going to be doing here today. Today we're going to be setting up the most basic version of what this would look like. So here we are in a empty project. The final project files will be down below in the description for downloads for YouTube members and patrons. But let's get started. I changed to a first person uh, perspective map here just because that's going to make aiming where we want to build these things a little bit more straightforward. Let's open up our first person blueprint. And here we're going to kind of just ignore everything that already exists. And I'm going to put in a debug key for the left mouse and a debug key for the right mouse as well. Whenever we press the right mouse, what we'll do is we'll just flip a ball back and forth between uh, being in building mode and not being in building mode. So we're going to make a variable for that called like building mode. And we'll just make two setting nodes for that. And whenever we press the right mouse button, obviously in a proper game, you would hook this up to something more akin to like a input action or whatever. Uh, but we're going to put this into a flip flop. So first time coming through, we're going to go into building mode. And then second time going through, we will disable building mode. We'll circle back around to uh, adding some more stuff to the end of this. And all that that's going to do uh, mostly is going to uh, either show or hide our little preview that we have. So the way that I set this up is, again, fairly uh, limited in some ways, but it's the most straightforward way to do it, is just adding a new static mesh component here and I uh, call that something like building preview. And we're going to drag that in and set hidden in game. Uh, the new hidden will be false if we are in building mode, uh, and we will set that to being true if we are not in building mode. If you want to expand this a little bit to maybe be a bit more flexible, you could make your own uh, like specific actor that you spawn in and then delete again uh, when you enter and exit building mode instead. That would allow you to more easily make some like other customizable inputs, like rotating it around and that kind of stuff. We're not going to bother with that for the time being, but that is something that you can do, which is going to keep it with a preview component on the actual player character for now. Then we're going to make a custom event, uh, which we'll call uh, show building preview. What that's going to do is. First and foremost, it's going to check whether or not we are in building mode. Because if we're not in building mode, it's going to do, uh, well, nothing, really. But if we are in building mode, we're going to do a few things. Most importantly, what we're going to do is we're going to do a line trace uh, by channel. We need the starting location and the ending location, for both of which we're going to be using our first-person camera. So we get the world location for our starting location for the camera. And then the ending location will be the world location plus the camera's forward vector. So we can get forward vector. And if we multiply that forward vector, that's the direction in the world that the camera is facing. Uh, if we multiply that with a float, we effectively are checking in the direction that we're looking within a certain amount of units, do we hit anything? We're going to set this to like... 5,000 or something like that. Something pretty big, but not too big. This is going to be the range in which you can build, essentially. And you add that to the uh, world location for the camera, and that'll be the end point. There we add another branch. And if we hit something, we're going to be moving on. If we don't hit something, obviously, we're not trying to like build anything. So uh, we just keep it as is. Let's get this out hit and break it because we're going to need to get the location and the normal of our hits. That's going to drive the location of our preview and the rotation of our preview. So you get our building preview static mesh, and we will set world location and rotation. 
The location is just going to be the location. And then the rotation, we're going to get the normal. And, and then rotation from Z vector. Because the normal is going to be the upward pointing direction for whatever face that we uh, are landing on. So we want to make sure that the upward facing direction of our rotation matches that. And that's what this does. So now, as long as we are in building mode, every single frame, uh, if we put this into the tick event, uh, we will be doing this. So show building preview. So just to make sure that everything uh, works properly, also go into your static mesh component and set this to having no collision. Otherwise, you're going to be tracing onto the thing that you're previewing itself, and it's going to be like, kind of weird. And give this a, a default mesh for now. We're going to just go material sphere. And now you'll see uh, we have this material sphere uh, just at zero, zero uh, for our <laughs> character. We'll make it invisible in a moment. If we press the right button, it starts showing wherever we are pointing. So we can start using this to like make our building system in a moment. The only thing really that we need to do now is instantiate this thing whenever we press the left button, as long as we are in building mode. Let's go back into our debug key left. And that is actually fairly easy as well. We want to check whether or not we're in building mode. So we're just going to copy this over building mode branch. Uh, because if we are not, oh, we didn't actually copy that. That's my bad. Uh, if we are not actually in building mode, we don't want to do anything. But if we are in building mode, what we do is we spawn actor from class. And in this case, what we'll do is we'll just spawn a static mesh actor and set the static mesh on it. If you want to be able to spawn in like chests and more interactable actors that have code on them, of course, you can spawn in any class that you want and you'd make this class a variable of whatever you're trying to spawn in. Uh, but for us, we're just going to stick with static mesh actor. Uh, the transform for it is going to be our building preview, get world location. For the transform location that we are putting in and then get world rotation for the rotation. It's quite as easy as that. Scale, you can also do. Uh, generally, we're just going to keep that at 111 anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Then, this is important for static mesh actors specifically. Uh, you need to change this to whatever mesh that we're going to be providing into it. We'll set that up in a moment. But in order to change the mesh of a static mesh actor, the actor uh, needs to set mobility to being movable because otherwise the engine assumes that it's going to be uh, static and for things like light baking that means that it doesn't move but also doesn't change in any way so it doesn't change into a different mesh so if you want to change it into a different mesh it needs to be movable but after that we can uh, set static mesh and uh, for this static mesh we're going to just promote this to variable i will call that the build mesh that's the mesh that we're going to be building and that's what we will set this to. So by default, we'll set that one to being our material sphere. And then what I like to do is on begin play, we'll add that. Uh, we'll take our building preview and also set the mesh to that variable. So that is always the same. Now, whenever we change that mesh, we're going to need to change it in the static mesh component as well. We'll set that up uh, like a little hard coded uh, in a moment. But this is pretty much uh, the basic concept. So now if we do this uh, once again, we can start actually like placing down these spheres in the world fairly easily, just like that. Now, there's a couple of things that we uh, obviously do want to do at this point. Number one is uh, making it changeable which mesh we spawn. Number two is making the preview uh, look a little bit better because we had that like holographic uh, material for the preview. And number three is I want to add in a snapping mode where it snaps to like a grid of 100 units or something like that. So that's a little bit easier to like build something a bit more organized with it. Let's start off with the snapping mode because that's actually super easy to do as well. Let's make a bool here, uh, call that snapping. Snapping is with double P, but I don't care. We'll add a debug key for like Q or something. Maybe S would be better for snapping. And we're effectively going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to add in a flip-flop 
and just add in snapping to true or snapping to false. An alternative way of doing this, by the way, uh, would be instead of doing the flip-flop, you could just get a snapping node and set snapping to its current value uh, and then not bool. This will just always invert the value of uh, whatever like bool value it has as well. It's a little bit cleaner and a little bit more like how you would do it in C++ uh, instead of like this more blueprint-oriented solution. But either one effectively does the same thing anyway. Now that we have that, we just check our location and we're going to be deciding our location based on that snapping bool. So what we do is we make a select vector and we base that on our snapping. So if snapping is false, we'll just get the actual location from our hit uh, from the line trace. In the other case, when snapping is true, we're going to uh, round to every 100 units. And the way we do that is we get our location, we divide it as a whole by a float value of 100. Then we need to split this structure pin and we're going to round every single one of these values. Let's say that we were at like 1520 for the X value. If we divide that by 100, that becomes 15.20. Then if we round it, it just becomes 15. Then we're going to multiply it by 100 again, and it's going to snap to 1500. So if you want to do this in any way with like 187, you can do that as well. You can do this effectively with any number, as long as the division and the multiplication are the same number. Then we're going to make a vector again with this x, y, and z, and then that vector again, do keep in mind, we want to multiply that by the same value again so again by 100 that will go into the a column so that's going to create a, a like snapping behavior for us which is uh, quite nice now number two is changing the static mesh and i'm going to just add a couple of debug keys for those as well so debug key one debug key two and debug key three and all that this is going to do is it's going to get our uh, build mesh and set it to a new value. Let's say for one, we're going to use the cone, and for two, we're going to use this pillar, and then for three, uh, let's do the material sphere. And after any one of these, we'll get our building preview mesh and just set that static mesh to the newly updated build mesh variable. And this is the nice thing about Blueprint, we can just connect all three of these events to go into this one node fairly smoothly and easily. So now we have the three different options uh, for that as well. So let's check out both of the things we just made. Number one is changing the preview mesh and also that changes the mesh that we like actually build with, so that's nice. And number two is if I press the Q key, we suddenly are snapping to increments of 100 in the world. Then the last quick thing that I want to do is just make a quick like material for our preview. This is not needed, obviously, in any way. Uh, but we'll call that hologram preview mesh or something like that. Preview material, whatever you want to call it. And this is going to be fairly easy as well. We'll set the blend mode to being uh, translucent. And then we will get our texture coordinates. So you can just get that by typing coord. I will break that vector. And then use either the R or the G, it doesn't really matter, it changes the direction of your lines. Put that into a sign node. And we'll set the period of the sign node. In this case, I want to set it to like 0 0.05. This will just increase the amount of lines. I'll show you in a moment. Uh, and then I want to clamp the value here between about 0 0.2 and 1. And that's going to go into the up capacity here and then we'll set the base color to being that like holographic blue and that creates our holographic uh, look we can also add the emission color for it if you prefer that gives it a little bit more of a holographic look obviously so if we like decrease this number even further we get more lines uh, you can preview it on a cube for like a better view i think 0 0.05 is pretty good because that's about 20 lines uh within like the uv space it's not really the point of this tutorial to make a material like that, but I figured we might as well throw that in. You can just put that material on your preview mesh. I set the default value of this component to be hidden in-game. And we have 
our building system. Just as easy and quick as that. Now, again, there is a lot of tweaking that you can do. This preview uh, thing could be an actor on its own that moves itself in the world based on the player's positioning and rotation. And that way it can have a little bit more code to itself. You could make a static mesh component extension that does this as well. So that the character itself isn't responsible uh, for all this type of stuff. It kind of depends on exactly what you want and need uh, from here on. You can change things, you can build upon this to like, suit your specific needs, but this is the basic idea of what you would do. So you have some type of mesh that is previewing, that gets updated based on where you look in the world. I like to also add an option for like the snapping thing. And then when you press a button, it just takes that preview mesh and spawns in a real one in that exact position. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas and Mauricio Ferrias. And my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku and Earl Monsville Erno.